neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye come to sea and land to make one proselyte, yeah, yeah. and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, ye yeah. blind guides, which yeah. say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever swear by the gift, that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, swear yeah, by yeah. it, and by yeah. all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, Lord. swear by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that swell, shall swear by heaven, swear by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anus and cumin, and have omitted the weightier merit matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other. Undone. Let us pray. When we count our many blessings and we see what you have done, we have no reason to complain. We have no reason to fear have no reason to to doubt we have no reason to be afraid have no reason Lord to to try to do it on our own we have no reason Lord to to go without you yeah yeah for you have given us Lord the abundance of blessing. Yes, yes. Truthfully, Lord, you have given us more than we ask for. More than we deserve. Yeah, yeah. More than we can even really handle. Lord, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Each and every day, Lord, you Give us brand new mercies. Keep us from danger seen and unseen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, when we talk about blessings, Lord, we start with the intangible things of life that, that we can't hold, that we can't always see, Lord, but we, we know that we can't live with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the hearts that are beating in our body. Thank you, Lord, for the minds that are still operate and regulate. Thank you, Lord, that we can still taste. We can still see. Yeah, yeah. We can still touch. Lord, thank you. Thank you. For the feet that we can still walk. Hands that we can still grab, Lord. We just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our families, our parents, grandparents. Thank you for our children and grandchildren, our cousins and nieces and nephews, Lord. We, we know, Lord, that life wouldn't be the same if we were all alone. So, Father, we want to say thank you for your blessings. 
Then, Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for shelter over our head, the clothes on our back, the jobs that we have, the, the ability, Lord, to, to move throughout, whether that be with a car or vehicle or even, Lord, on the tra different forms of transportation. We want yeah. to say thank you. Yeah, yeah. But, Lord, we also want to thank you for a church to, to call home. Thank you, Lord, that while other churches are closed, while other churches don't know uh, whether what to do, Lord, we thank you for the Holy Trinity United Baptist Church and our pastor, George C. Gilbert, Sr., Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you continue to, to dwell among us and to continue to talk to us and to continue to receive our glory our praise and our honor to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that, thank you. that you haven't given up on us. And Lord, we ask right now that you forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. Help us to be better. Help us to do better. Help us, Lord, to have a heart for you that we say, not my will, but thine will be done. Father, somebody today needs a special blessing, a special touch, a special understanding, Lord. Of you. Lord, let them know that you're right there, that you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And though the storms of life may be raging and we feel like we're battered by an angry sea, we can still look to the hills from which cometh our help, for our help cometh in you, Lord. Lord, you have a great track record. Lord. You've never let us down. You've never not been there for us. You, you've always, Lord, been a good God to us. And help us, Lord, to remember that you have us in the palm of your hands. Lord, it is in you we live. It is in you we move. It's in you that we have our beings, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And, and Father, those, Lord, that are living listening to us online, Lord, we ask that you will not allow them to get weary and well-doing. Not allow them to be discouraged, Lord. But help them to grow their faith. Help them, Lord, to stand strong in the time of trouble. Some among us, Lord, who have lost their way, we ask that you touch them, Lord, and bring them back as a sheep who have lost their shepherd father. Lord, we don't want to lose anyone in the midst of, of this pandemic, Lord. Help us, Lord, to, to gather the sheep uh, all back together. Father, today we need a special word from you. We need to hear your voice. We need to hear what you would have us to do. I ask right now that you prepare our hearts prepare our minds so that we can receive the words that you have us to hear coming from our pastor, Lord, today. Give him a special touch. Give him a special anointing, Lord. Lord, give him a special, a special uh, countenance on him, Lord, so that we don't just see him, Lord, but we see you. We're going to give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory, Lord, because we know that it ain't over yeah, yeah. until you say it so. Yeah, yeah. Lord, we look look to you for 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 how you're gonna work all this out. Yeah, yeah. We are excited about what you're gonna do. We are excited that there is still a blessing in this press. Yes. We are excited that that after the storm, the sun will shine again. So, Father, we bless your name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
this message that the Lord has laid on my heart. And I should say, I've been wrestling and the angel has been wrestling with me. Uh, somewhere like Jacob who wrestled all night long with the angel and said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. But I pray that you will pray with me. Matthew chapter 23, Matthew chapter 23, beginning at verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one prosperate. And when he is made, you ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. I want to, I want to talk, I want to talk today about being brutally frank. Yeah. Being brutally frank. Today, uh -huh. truth is a rare thing to find. Yeah. I said truth is a rare thing to find. Uh -huh. the, pre the president tells so many untrue until it's hard to determine when he's telling the truth about anything. Yeah. Many of his cohorts, many of his followers, yeah. many of his associates and his partners in crime have been tried and found to be liars. Lord have mercy. They have lied to judges, to lawyers, to Congress, and to the general public. Yeah. It makes one wonder if anybody is telling the truth these days. Uh -huh. And it's very clear, it's very clear that Ananias and Sapphira are not the only ones who did not tell the truth. Yeah. They are not the only ones who tried to cover up their sin. Uh -huh. They are not the only ones who tried to masquerade their double dealings. Talk, sir. But in our society, we we do expect for some people yeah. to be truthful. Yeah. Yeah. We have officials and other people who are holding offices that we expect to be honest. Yeah. They even took an oath to be truthful and to be honest. 
We expect, we expect them to have integrity. Yeah. But it just seems like it is difficult to find people today who want to be known for their integrity. Yeah. They want to be known for being smart. Yeah. They want to be known for attending and graduating from Ivy League school. Yeah. But they don't seemingly care anything about being known for being a person who has integrity. Uh huh. Now, now, I know that President Obama was not perfect. No. He was not without faults. Well, but one thing we all can say about the Obama administration uh -huh. is that there were no scandals yeah. in the White House while he was president. And believe me, and believe me when I tell you, if there had been any scandal yes. about him or even his family, it would have been all over the television. Yes. All in the Washington Post and the New York Times. But there were no scandals. There was nothing for them to talk about. President Obama and Michelle are people, are persons of integrity. Yeah. In our text, in our text, we we see it was a great complaint of our Lord against the Pharisees and the scribes because they had lost the sense of what was important. Yeah. They made much of things that were little and true, and they left out altogether the more weightier matters. Uh -huh. They were known, they were known to strain their nets and swallow camels. Yes, sir. Well, that is to say, when they were pouring wine into a cup, they would pour it through a cloth of fine texture and so strain out the unclean midget. Yeah. Yeah. And then turn around and swallow a camel. Uh -huh. So here in our text, throughout this 23rd chapter of Matthew, Jesus rebukes them for their bad behavior. Yeah. He calls them out. There are no less than eight woes in this 23rd chapter. And most importantly, a most important part of the, the work of God was to expose the utterly false and worthless character of the honored religious leaders. So he called them out. He, he shined a spotlight yeah. on their bad behavior. Yeah. He had no problem. He had no problem in talking about their works and their worthlessness. Yeah. He had no problem talking about their misguided teaching, teachings and their messy ministry. Yeah. So Jesus exposed them. Jesus showed his holy indignation. Talk, sir. So Jesus, Jesus, like <coughs> many modern preachers and prophets, was brutally frank. Uh -huh. So the first thing I want to lift up from this profound passage is uh, I want to talk about uh, keeping folk out of the kingdom. Jesus, Jesus admonishes these Pharisees by calling them hypocrites. Uh -huh. In essence, Jesus says to them, you're nothing but show-offs. Yeah. 
you lock people out of the kingdom of heaven. You make it almost impossible for anybody to get into heaven with all of your rules and all of your law. Yeah. And the sad thing about what you are doing is you won't go in yourself. And you keep others from going in. Lord have mercy. And we need to know. We need to know that Jesus saying woe unto you is his expression of holy indignation. Yeah. Jesus was angry. He was disgusted. Uh huh. He was angry, but at the same time, he was grieved and sorrowful. Yeah. He was the righteous judge. Denouncing the hypocrisy of these uh, religious leaders. I was watching the television program Monday night entitled All Rise. Uh -huh. Judge Lola Carmichael had to make it clear that the federal government could not just come into her courtroom and overrule her presiding on the bench. Yeah. And they could not uh, disallow an immigrant in her courtroom from receiving justice. Yeah. Justice, my brothers and my sisters, should, should be the order of the day yeah. in the courthouse as well as in the outhouse. Jesus, Jesus wanted to see justice yeah. being done. But he knew the hardness of their hearts. Mm -hmm. And in his awful judgment, he pronounced their condemnation. Say it, brother. And yet, as I, as I previously said, these woes were also utterances of holy sorrow. Uh -huh. Jesus grieved over these sinners who paraded around like they were saints. Yes, sir. Lord have mercy. For at the end of this chapter, verse 37, we read Jesus saying, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stoneth them which are sent unto you. How, how often would I have gathered your children together, yeah. even as a hen gathered with her chicks under her wing. Yeah. But you would not. You refused my help. You refused. Jesus' words are stern, very terrible, but, but it is the sternness of holy love. He cared for the souls of those scribes and Pharisees. Yeah. He had wept over them as he came near the city and observed what was going on in that city. Uh, he, he spoke in tones of warning. If so be that even now these hard-hearted men might learn to know the terror, the terrorists of the Lord. Yeah. And that they might repent and be saved. Uh huh. I can remember, I can remember several years ago when when the Pope came to visit Washington, D.C. Yeah. One of the things he said that I shall never forget, he said, while wow, there are so many homeless people in America. Afterwards, he, he visited Capitol Hill and he met with some of the members of Congress. Yeah. After his brief meeting with some of the members of Congress, he walked to his car and then, then the Speaker of the House, Congressman Boehner, walked with him. Uh -huh. I don't know, I don't know what the Pope said to Congressman Boehner, but, but I do know that Congressman Boehner 
made up in his mind somewhere between the, the walk to the car and the walk back yeah. to the house, he immediately resigned from college. Yeah, yeah. I would like to believe that the Pope said something to him that pricked his heart yeah. and pricked his mind. Uh -huh. And from that day on, we saw no more of Congressman Bain. Well, it could have been a war. But whatever the Pope said, it turned Congressman Bainard around. The second woe that Jesus said to these hypocritical Jewish leaders was that you crooks are condemned. The scribes and the Pharisees were like the false teachers that Paul talked about in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 6. Paul said, Paul said, some men fool whole families just to get power over those women yeah. who are slaves of sin uh -huh. and are controlled by all sorts of desires. Paul says, these women always want to learn something new, but they never can discover the truth. Yeah. And, since, and since I'm talking about truth, I feel compelled to tell you a little more about what I hinted, hinted at last, last Sunday. Uh huh. If we are ever, Reverend, if we are ever going to have a country that Talk, sir. respects the rights of all people, we have to do something about the system. Yeah. The system. It's a system we didn't design. It's a system not of our making. Yeah, yeah. We had no hand in in the design of the system that we are compelled to live under. Lord have mercy. The American promise contained in the Declaration of Independence is probably the most humane ever reduced to language. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. Talk, sir. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah. Yeah. The promise, the promise embedded in these words is theologically sound and astrologically correct. But man, man has lost his capacity. Lord, Man has lost his ability to live up to these words. Yeah. I repeat, I repeat. Uh, there is a system. There is a system that drives this country. Uh, the, the system, the system refers to the American Trinity. Uh huh. The American Trinity of capitalism, racism, and militarism. Capitalism is the economic system erected on the damnable foundation of slave labor. Talk, sir. Racism serves to preserve and to perpetuate the system. Yeah. Militarism 
is to enforce the system by whatever means the powers that be sees necessary. We saw this in action when Trump ordered his secret police to hit the streets in Washington and in Portland, Oregon to control uh -huh. protesters. Uh, and we ought to understand, we ought to understand that Help us, the system is rigged. Yes. For example, the Black Panther organization was annihilated. Yeah. They were destroyed by our government. Mm -hmm. However, on the other hand, the, the existence of the Ku Klux Klan yeah. continues. And in many instances, the white supremacists That's right. are applauded for what they do. Yes, sir. Yeah. Even in Charlotte, North Charlottesville, North Carolina, Charlottesville, Virginia, uh -huh. they paraded around with torches lit. Yeah. As if they were marching to a lynching. Yes, and when asked about these white supremacists, the President of the United States of America had the nerve to say there were good people on both sides. Lord, my brothers and my sisters, we, we are fighting a system. Talk, sir. And until we can change the system, hmm. it will be business as usual. Yeah, yeah. You know, it has been said that there is a gravestone in a cemetery in Japan uh -huh. that reads, Here lies a black man who fought the yellow man for what the white man took from the red man. Wow. It's a system. Lord have mercy. My brothers and my sisters, we are dealing with a system. And we can't, we can't get on even playing grounds yeah. just by fighting one part of this trend. We fight racism, but then there is capitalism and militarism that we have to, to deal with. Uh -huh. And I, I thank God. I thank God, I thank God for the Black Lives Matter movement. Say it, but if we're going to change the system, yeah. we still have more work to do. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. the third woe in verse 15 is a warning. A warning, warning that proudness sends souls to hell. Listen to what Jesus says. He said, you compass land and sea to make one proselyte. You travel over land and sea to win one follower. And when you have done so, you make that person twice as fit for hell as you are. But their zeal was Party zeal. Yeah. Party spirit had taken the place of religion yeah. in their hearts. Uh -huh. We might say party spirit had outtrumped righteous, uh, righteousness. Yeah. 
or putting it into in terms that we all can understand. Party spirit had kept them from doing what was right. Yeah. That's what we see happening today in Congress. Yeah. Those in the Senate have a party zeal. They have a party spirit. Right, wrong, or indifferent, they are going with the party, even if the party means going to hell. Lord have mercy. And I just believe that some of them know that they are not doing the right thing. But they are loyal to their party. In our text, there is one more thing that I, I want to mention. It's right here in the 16th verse. And I take what the, that verse says to me. It says, greedy for gain. Uh -huh. Jesus said, woe unto you. You are supposed to lead others. But you are blind. You teach that it doesn't matter if a person swears by the temple. Yeah. But you say that it does matter if someone swears by the gold in the temple. Yeah. You blind fools. Uh -huh. They were blind guys. Yeah. Fools and blind. I'm sure you have heard the saying, if the blind Shall lead the blind. Oh, they all gonna fall into a ditch. Yeah. These scribes said, "This people who knows not the law are cursed." Yeah. But they themselves were ignorant of God's word. Their teachings were full of childish and pre God. Pre-kindergarten principles yeah. and false distinctions. At the time Jesus uttered these words, blind guides, it was a perfect description. Uh -huh. And the thought must have brought a, a smile at least to the faces of those who heard Jesus call them blind guides. Yeah. The Pharisees were blind to the true value of life. Oh, Their priorities were confused. They would take an oath and use some sacred object to substantiate that oath. Yeah. Jesus had to say, you blind fool. Oh, Which is great. The gold or the temple yeah. that makes the gold sacred. Uh -huh. Jesus knew that the Pharisees wanted both the gold and the gifts on the altar. Yeah. These men were not seeking for the righteousness of God, but they were greedy for gain. Uh -huh. As America has done, they work out a system that permitted them to rob God and others and still maintain their reputation. Yeah. There has always been some counterfeit Christians in the world. Uh -huh. There has always been some counterfeit believers in the world, yeah. starting with Cain. The Pharisees and the scribes and, and their kind are guilty of all the righteous blood shed in the name of religion. Yeah. The white, the white evangelicals who will throw rocks and then hide their hands will surely have their day in the judgment. For example, they they are very vocal about women having abortions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
They like to claim they are pro-life. But then they, they are the very ones who will kill the baby yes, after the baby has been born. Yes, they will cut off the food supply. Yeah. They will call the mother a welfare queen yeah. simply because she's trying to feed her baby. They fuss about adequate affordable health care yeah. to take care of these babies after they are born. Yeah. They fuss about giving more money for education yeah. so the children can grow up to be intelligent. Yeah. They have been heard saying, we will educate ours and you all need to educate yours. To be brutally frank, uh -huh. oh, that that awful day will surely come, yes, sir. Yes, sir. When we all stand before the the judge and have to give an account of every deed that has been done in this part, yeah. Yeah. it will be a day of reckoning. I want to be brutally frank. It will be a day when the cover will be removed. Yes. Uh, it, it will be a day. It will be a day when the Lord will separate the sheep from the goat. Yeah. 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 It will be a day. It will be a day when the Lord will say to many, depart from me. Because I never knew you. Uh -huh. But I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad <clears throat> that it will also be a day when the Lord shall say to a great host of his believing children, You've been faithful over a few things. Yeah. Well done, thy good and faithful yeah. servant.
hear this thing all right. You have to talk with him.
God is blessed. God is blessed. I tell you, this is a blessed day. God is good, and He's good all the time. Praise God. Certainly grateful for you and you and you and you.